Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome back to the Antibubble Report uh, for uh, the end of 2021, which has been an extraordinary year. Uh, in this section, we're going to discuss uh, portfolio construction, performance, uh, attribution, and, and a number of key considerations. And uh, as always, I, I like to start with uh, this idea of, uh, you know, when you build a team, this uh, concept of false diversification and how uh, seemingly diversified uh, portfolios where you have a lot of things uh, with periods of stress and crisis all behave the same way. So what you see here in blue is the performance of, of Igneo, uh, the best strategy in the world in February 2020, one of the best throughout the different uh, crises that we've, we've lived through since, since inception, but that at the same time has had a, a very, very difficult and hostile past 18 months uh, that, that many of us have been suffering. Uh, as you can see, almost a, a, a mirror image of the, uh, the, the straight lineup move in, in equity markets. And uh, I think looking into the change of, of regime with uh, the normalization of monetary policy, uh, I think we might be in a very interesting uh, setting for strategies that are more defensive and more focused on volatility and inflation, such as Igneo. Uh, in that sense, you know, uh, building these teams, you know, uh, as I always say, a portfolio is like a like a football team. You you need strikers, defenders, midfielders. You also need to look at uh, at inflation, which is is a critical um, uh, consideration for the next decade, as I discuss over and over in my in my presentation. And 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 there's a role, in our opinion, for for anti bubbles. And uh, uh, to, to be part of the team, uh, it's it's about that true uh, diversification throughout the cycle. And uh, there are potentially qu quite a few different defensive strategies. Uh, some are more focused on volatility. Some are like ours are more focused on, on anti bubbles. And uh, what what we do and the way we, we play this is we have a strategy that has three core uh, buckets. It has an allocation to precious metals to US treasuries, both of which we believe are anti-crisis and anti-bubble assets. Um, and, and very importantly, uh, a bucket on, on optionality and insurance, where uh, despite being a relatively small amount, approximately 20% of the premium of the assets um, has the potential to generate very large asymmetric returns. Uh, here, what we do is we primarily buy um, call options on, on anti-bubbles, put options on, on, on bubbles, and um, uh, you're, you're called, you're the judge also, what, what, what is a bubble, what's an anti-bubble, uh, we're not in possession of the truth, but from a, a risk management perspective, it's a strategy that is, is meant to be uh, as predictable as possible, even if uh, this uh, volatility bucket and insurance bucket uh, you know, is uh, designed with, with a long only format, which means that the worst case scenario is, is the premium at risk. Uh, it is subject to rebalancing and that rebalancing, as I'll discuss later, uh, I uh, raise my hand. Uh, I have been uh, quite negative over the past 18 months and perhaps accumulating a large amount of insurance, which unfortunately or fortunately hasn't really uh, paid out. Uh, fortunately for for us, as uh, the the world is 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 holding better. Unfortunately for obviously us investors, uh, because we've suffered losses. But um, I think from a forward looking perspective, we'll see uh, the strategy is well well set to to do what what it needs to do. Um, and and in that sense, uh, if you look at the snapshot of the option bucket, uh, you see that we have uh, about 19.3% in, in optionality as we speak, uh, which is spread throughout different underlines, different time horizons. Uh, the strategy is really focused on two key themes, uh, volatility and inflation. And we do that through uh, call options on, on precious metals, on, on treasuries, uh, on the dollar, uh, puts on equities, puts on, on, on assets such as China, which we believe are uh, large uh, tail risks in, in the system. Um, the way uh, we, we implement this is, is both through vanilla options, which is 
really the best thing you could you could get. There's nothing better than a vanilla, but uh, sometimes these options are quite expensive, and we look for ways to to cheapen the the premium to improve the carry and enhance the asymmetry, and that's why we take advantage of um, also um, skew in the market or correlation uh, and term structure to to create payoffs that are uh, perhaps uh, you know a little bit more complex, but uh, always with the premium as the worst case scenario, and that uh, can offer uh, substantially higher um, uh, returns. So we're looking when we put these trades uh, at five to one, ten to one, or even even higher bets. Um, so in that sense, uh, exotic uh, options, hybrid options are, uh, in our view, uh, sources that will allow us to achieve these, these objectives. Uh, ultimately, uh, there's a trade-off between the simple vanilla payout and something more complex, and that's why uh, there's some, some science and in, in, in art in the process, which I'll discuss in, a, in the following section uh, called Relative Value Across Volatility and Insurance. Uh, but for now, we'll continue with, with the analysis and, and, and sort of uh, try to uh, also reflect and, and apply the lessons learned through this, this painful uh, recent period where, um, you know, we've been, uh, as a market, we continue to, to go against us, both with equities higher and uh, bigs lower and gold lower uh, and, and China higher, etc., uh, how uh, you know we've been topping up this this premium to this sort of neutral 20% position, uh, and 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 I think here what is is key is uh, you know as I said earlier we've been uh, perhaps uh, quite uh, aggressive in 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 our approach with respect to how do we balance the need for protection versus the amount of premium spent. And um, in that sense, uh, perhaps it's a, it's a good decision and bad outcome. Uh, the fact of the matter is that we have been uh, spending a lot of premium, which, which never paid out and topping that up. And so uh, we've uh, come to, to, to the conclusion that we have to be uh, you know, much more strict with respect to the, the, the premium spend. This is designed to give uh, you investors greater uh, transparency of what to expect. Um, this is also resulting in, uh, you know, in levels that will give us sufficient punch to, to, to do what we need to do. And we think that that right balance is about 10% per annum in premium spent. Now, this is subject to, to profit taking on the way up, it's subject to, to rebalancing on, on, on the way down. And, um, and, and again, something that uh, we we're managing um, to to the best of our, our efforts. Um, if, if we look at uh, previous um, moves, such as March, you know we entered that with with a premium that was a little bit overweight after a very strong February, and and lots of things happened. You know, and I think what what's important to see is that uh, you know when not not everything is going to pay out at the same time. So, you know, March two thousand twenty was. Was a case where we we had a, a you know decent performance in treasuries, although it was very volatile. But gold actually did very poorly then, only to recover later. And and we were also uh, very disciplined in our approach, uh, not only adding on the way down, but but taking profits and reinvesting that into forward-looking opportunities, uh, which basically positioned us well and in a neutral basis to to a bit like a goalkeeper is on save and comes back. So uh, in that sense, we, we're striving to, to be as predictable as possible. And we're introducing this uh, enhancement to, to the way we do things to, to, to adhere to these objectives, um, uh, which, which effectively looks to, to take profits, to reduce risk when, when, uh, when we're doing well, to increase when uh, uh, the market's going against us. And uh, we believe this is the, the right uh, approach in, in a way that we are very disciplined and, 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 and in a repeatable process that can give us access to uh, a sustainable alpha with, with, uh, with daily liquidity and large capacity. So uh, I think looking back and also how does this 
what does this mean in terms of the overall portfolio? Um, and, 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 and going back to the, the analogy, I think it's important to uh, understand that the distortions in the market uh, have dramatically impacted also uh, asset allocation. Uh, in fact, uh, there's no such thing really as asset allocation when everything is moving up and down in the, in the same way. Uh, once upon a time, uh, fixed income, uh, you know, a 10 year treasury or bond at, at 5% uh, was a defender because if a crisis came, yields would go down to zero and you would earn uh, potentially up to 50% capital appreciation. Uh, in, a, in a world of uh, artificially low interest rates, uh, even uh, negative nominal yields, and the room for defense is much, much more limited. So this is really not about the label in, 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 in your, or the number in your t-shirt, this is about how you behave. And this factor uh, behavior uh, is, is critical to, to understand who are the defenders, who, who will do well. And we, we see volatility uh, as, as a key uh, defender. Uh, we also see uh, gold as, as, a, as a ultimately a, uh, an, an asset that would benefit from this crisis through the response to monetary policy, but uh, the, the generally uh, optionality and, and call options on, on, on anti-bubbles and put options on bubbles are, in our view, a good combination to, to achieve this. And, and so when, when you build a team and, and you have these this factors, this behavior, um, this is uh, really about uh, finding uh, players, ideally both of them, Will generate absolute positive returns and you want to achieve that with very strong negative correlation. In this uh, case study which I always use, uh, this is the uh, two, two assets, IGNE and the S&P. Uh, as you can see even visually you can see the strong negative correlation uh, over the past 18 months, uh, incredibly uh, incredible bounce in, in equities up, um, you know, 80% uh, since we launched, but, but closer to 100% uh, since, since March, and whereas uh, we've been suffering, and uh, we may well be ahead of a, a reversal of, of these trends, who, who knows. Um, but I think here it's important when you look at the diversification, this, this is a hostile market uh, analysis, is how do you do when the team needs it the most, and that's something we try to achieve by construction. The, the ultimate result when you have a rebalanced basket is you're going to create a team that is, is benefiting or much more balanced. And uh, as you can see here, a 50-50 rebalanced basket would have achieved close to 23% with uh, you know, significantly lower volatility than any of the, the two. So with that, uh, I uh, reinforce our view that uh, you know, many of the things we've done uh, have, have not worked out in the past 18 months. Uh, the, however, as we discussed in the previous section, we think the, the macro situation and, and, and the thesis remains in full force. And uh, we believe that uh, defensive, this is, there is a room for defensive strategies in portfolio construction and uh, that strategies like IGNEO will hopefully be very additive for those times which might be, might be ahead. So, um, I hope uh, you find this, this section uh, helpful and I uh, invite you to join uh, other sections we'll be discussing uh, in more detail the macro outlook, including uh, China rates, inflation, energy, and, and also uh, the section on, on the relative value across volatility. Where we're going to be discussing in more detail the uh, insurance bucket and, and, uh, and some of the relative value across the different assets. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll catch up soon. Thank you.